Number 20. A new landowner has a triangular piece of flat land she wishes to fence. Starting at the west corner, she measures the first side to be 80 meters long and the next to be 105 meters long. These sides are represented as displacement vectors A and B in figure 3.59. She then correctly calculates the length and orientation of the third side C. What is her result? All right, so let's take a look at the picture on the right-hand side. So they told us that vector A is 80 meters, and that's the vector right here. They then told us that uh, vector B is 105 meters, and that's the vector right here. And then um, a new landowner wants, she then wants to calculate um, the resultant vector, essentially, right? C is, is the resultant vector. The reason why, don't mind the arrow pointing back to the, the origin. Just remember, we started here and we ended here. The end of B is there. So this line right here is considered the resultant. So what we're looking to do is we're looking to calculate the resultant. And they want us to find this angle at the top. All right. So let's first uh, take each vector at a time. Remember, whenever we have to calculate resultant vectors uh, from a series of vectors, we like to think about it as a component table. So let's just write that actually first. So my component table will be consistent of X components, and Y components. I have vector A, I have vector B, and then when I sum them together, I will get the components of my resultant vector. Okay, so let's first focus on vector A. So let's draw a coordinate system, Y axis, X axis. And now what I'm going to do on this coordinate system is, is I'm going to draw vector A. And vector A is drawn in this direction at an angle of 21 degrees south of east. So this angle in here is 21 degrees. Now what I want to do is, and also remember that the magnitude of this vector is 80 meters. What I want to do now is I want to find the x component. Let's label that x, and um, which is positive, right? And I want to now find the y component as well of that vector. And this should be a negative y because it's going in the negative y direction. So let's first look at x. How do I find x? Well, we know the hypotenuse. We know this angle, and the x side is adjacent to that angle. Therefore, I would use cosine. So cosine of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Cosine of 21 is going to equal the x value over 80. So now let's just take cosine of 21, plug that into the calculator. So cosine of 21 multiplied by 80. So we get a value, and we'll do two significant figures of 7.5. Not 7.5, 75. What am I talking about? 75 meters. So that's the x value. Now let's take a look at calculating the y value. How do we do that? We have the hypotenuse, we have this angle, and now we're looking for the opposite side. Therefore, we would use sine. So sine of theta is now the opposite over the hypotenuse. So sine of 21 will equal negative y over 80. So negative y will equal, just take sine of 21 and multiply that by 80, and we get 29. Now remember, it's negative, so it's negative 29. Okay, just move the negative sign over. So now these are my components for vector A, my x and y components. So now let's go to the table on the left-hand side. Let's plug in the x component. So we calculated it to be 75 meters. And the y component, we calculated it to be negative 29 meters. Great, so that takes care of vector A. Now moving on to uh, vector B now. So let's take a look where vector B is in the picture, that's this vector right here. Okay, so let's draw another coordinate. So actually I'll put a little VA up here, so that was vector A. Now let's do vector B over here, okay? Another coordinate, so we have our Y and our X. Now remember, whenever you start drawing your vector on your coordinate system, you will always put the tail of the vector at the origin. So in terms of letter B, the tail is the side that does not have the arrow. Right? So that would be this little dot here. Okay, so those dots go together. So now what I have to do is I have to draw that vector in my coordinate system. 
And it looks like it's going to be something maybe, it's really not straight at all. Let's try to do it a little straighter. Something like that, right? Where it tells us that the angle in here is 11 degrees. Great. They also tell us the magnitude of this um, vector, right? It's 105 meters. And now what I'm tasked with is I'm trying to figure out the X and the Y components. So it doesn't matter which we do first, all right? If I solve for X first and then Y, or if I do Y and then X, it doesn't matter. Let's do Y and X, okay? So here's the Y coordinate. Right, let's draw a little Y, and that'll be positive Y because it's in the positive Y direction. And then now in black, just gonna change the colors here. Now in black, that would be my X component. Now this is in the negative X direction, right? Relative to the Y axis. Okay, so now let's go about, let's first, why don't we first calculate our X value? Remember, we know the hypotenuse, we know this angle, and now we're looking for the side opposite of that angle. So let's do cos uh, sine. So sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. The sine of 11 will equal negative X over 105. Negative x will equal now, so sine of 11 multiplied by 105. So we get, and now we need three sig figs, so we get 220.0. And just move the negative sign on over, so it's negative 20.0. Okay, great, so that's my x component. Let's go plug it in the table now. So the x component, negative 20.0 meters. Great, now take a look back at the picture here. Let's do the y. Okay, remember, I know the hypotenuse, I know this angle, and now I'm looking for the side adjacent to that angle. Therefore, we're gonna use cosine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine of 11 is equal to positive y over 105. So just simply do your cross multiplication. Cosine of 11 times 105. And we get a value of 103. So 103, and again, that's in meters, okay? So let's put that in our table. And this is now 103 meters. Great, I just left out the meters here. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. All right, so now we got that, great. So we found all the components. We found the X's and the Y's of both vectors. Now to find my components, let's look at the component table. To find the components of the resultant vector, all I gotta do is add the X's together to get this value. Add the Y's together to get this value. So let's do that. So 75 minus 20 should be 55 meters, okay? And then the y's now, we're gonna do negative 29 plus 103, and we get a value of positive 74. So positive 74 meters. Now these are the components. This is the x component of the resultant, and this is the y component of the resultant. So now what I'm gonna do right below here is I'm gonna create a new coordinate system, okay? My y coordinate my x coordinate, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw the resultant vector, all right? So let's first work with the x value. It says x is going to be 55 meters. Positive, right? So we gotta go out in the positive x direction. So that looks good to me. And then the y value is 74 meters, right? So now we have to go up 74 meters. We do it basically tip to tail. And again, it didn't matter if you started with the Y and then the X, we would have gotten the same result. So let's draw, let's go up. This is not to scale, by the way. Okay, that goes up to 74 there. Great, and now where's the resultant vector? The resultant vector will now be from the start at the origin to the end. So let's draw a nice straight line there. Beautiful. And now this is the resultant vector right here. Okay, so I know the components of that resultant vector, right? I know this is 55 meters, and the y value is 74 meters. So how do I find now the resultant? Well, I can use Pythagorean's theorem, right? A squared plus B squared equals C squared, and then solve for C. Or I can use this already reworked formula on the right-hand side over here that I just drew an angle. Uh, not an angle, an arrow. Okay, let me use that, because that's a little faster. So the resultant vector here will be equal to radical, uh, or square root of the sum of all the x's squared, plus the sum of all the y's squared. 
Okay, so my resultant vector here will equal, what was all this, the sum of all the x's? It was 55, right? That's what we summed it to be. So it's 55 squared plus, what was the sum of all the y's? It was 74. So plus 74 squared. So now what do we get when we plug it into the calculator? So second square root, 50, oop, 55 squared plus 74 squared. And we get a value of, and two sig figs, so it's 92. So we get a value of 92 meters. Okay, now that is the resultant value. And now notice also, look at how similar they look, right, in terms of the picture on the upper right hand side. So first actually take a look at the left, bottom left. Here's the resultant vector. Look how it's in quadrant one. Okay, now take a look at the picture in the upper right hand side. Oh, look at the resultant vector. It's also in quadrant quadrant one there, right? It looks very, very much the same and they should be. Okay, so we actually found that C here on the upper right hand side should equal 92 meters. Great. Now how do I find, um, so that's great. Now what they want us to find is this angle. Ooh, that sounds weird, right? Well, not so much, right? We can use uh, a little geometry here. If I can find, so here's essentially my, my resultant, uh, my resultant vector is basically, the components of it are basically right here. Okay, here's the X and here's the Y. If I can find this angle, doesn't that equal this angle? Remember all those rules back to geometry in high school? Isn't that like alternate interior angles or something like that, right? They're the same, they are congruent, they are equal. So if I can just simply find this angle, then I will know that angle. Cool, so that's my job, let's find this angle. So go back to the bottom left, because the picture is a little less detailed here. So I wanna find this angle right there. All right, so how do we do it? So let's use the summed values that we found, 55 and 74. If we're gonna use those values, we're gonna be doing tangent, right? So I'm gonna do tangent all the way on the right-hand side. So tangent of theta will equal the opposite side over the adjacent side. So the tangent of that angle will be 74 over 55. Great, so tangent of that angle will be, so 74 over 55, we get 1.3, uh, 1.3, actually no, two sig figs, sorry, so 1.3, and then do the inverse tan. So second tangent of 1.3, and we get 52. So the answer here is 52. So 52 degrees, now you're almost done, but we have to give it a direction. We gave it a magnitude, right? The angle is 52 degrees, but 52 degrees relative to what? Or to where? Well, let's take a look at the picture. It looks like this, take a look at the bottom left. This resultant vector here looks like it is measured, being measured right in here, being measured north of east, right? I'm measuring from the east axis and it is going to be north of that east axis. Therefore, I'm going to say on the bottom right now, it's gonna be 52 degrees N or north of east. And that would now be the final direction of that vector. Okay, so putting it all together, it should be the resultant vector is 92 uh, meters at 52 degrees north of east. Final, final, complete answer. Okay, guys, thanks for tuning in. Hope this helped. Not too bad. The component table organizes it very well, I believe. So please subscribe. It would help us out tremendously. And I will see you in the next lesson.